Just sit there and close your eyes and relax your ass off. That's, that's what I tell my clients and my students. You relax every single cell of your body, and then when you think that you're done, you keep going because you're carrying tension that you're numb to. Namaste. You're listening to the Savannah Podcast. Join us on an exploration of Eastern spirituality, yoga philosophy, and conscious living for the new age. This podcast is a production of SavannahSpirit.com, the best place to shop for unique clothing, spiritual handcrafted jewelry, healing gemstones, and fair trade gifts from the Far East. Now, here's your host, Brett Larkin. Hello, Savannah family. Welcome back. I hope you're having a beautiful day that you've done yoga, that you've had a chance to meditate and take some deep breaths. I'm super excited for today's episode. I am going to be talking to John Hankey. He is a certified hypnotherapist specializing in phobias and performance anxiety. He's the founder of Mindful Test Taking, a company that helps high school, college, and graduate students overcome test anxiety by teaching them mindfulness techniques both in person and over video conference. Today, we're going to learn from him how All of us can overcome our phobias, fears, and performance anxiety so we can operate at our peak potential. So that's what's coming. Before we dive in, just a quick reminder that all of us can hang out together to talk about yoga and mindfulness and meditation in our very own private Facebook group, Savannah East. So make sure to go on over to savannaeast.com forward slash group, and I can approve you as a member in that private Facebook community. And I know, I say it almost every week, but your ratings and reviews of the show really mean the world to me. So if you haven't taken a moment to give this show a rating on iTunes, please take a second to do that today, even if iTunes isn't how you usually listen to the show. Okay. John, I'm super excited to have you with us. I feel very blessed because I get to talk to so many mindfulness and meditation experts here on the show, but it's usually not around this concept of peak performance. So I'm excited for you to dive in and tell us more about that. So welcome. Well, thank you so much. It feels great to be here. So I've heard you talk about how the core principle of mindfulness is something that you called progressive relaxation. And I know you have something called the reset. And I've never heard of either of these things. So I'm hoping you can tell me and listeners more about these concepts. Sure. So we teach students that, uh, you know, my company is Mindful Test Taking. We teach students that the driving force uh, in how present you are is how relaxed and free of tension that your body is. So progressive relaxation refers to how the more that you practice relaxing, the better that you get at relaxing and the deeper you can go. Uh, And the classic way to practice progressive relaxation is the body scan meditation where you uh, feel and relax consciously one body part at a time, generally from head to toe and then toe back up to head. And we actually have an audio on our website under resources called the Body Scan Audio. And it's about nine minutes and people can just play it and lay down or sit down and relax and just let the audio guide you into a deeper and deeper state of relaxation. Now, the reset takes the body scan a step further. The reset is the fundamental technique that every meditation technique is based off of, okay? And the reset involves doing absolutely nothing but allowing your entire body to relax all at once. And every, you know, usually every minute or two, you'll feel some tension begin to leave your body, which is a sign that blood flow and circulation is being restored to that area. And so the more tension that you release, the more present you become. One of the things that I think is interesting about what you're doing is I think a lot of people, whether they're gearing up to take a test or they're trying to improve their professional life at work, they think they need to work harder, to do more, to study more, to cram more. But it seems like what you're really teaching and talking about here is that, no, 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 you need to relax more. How does someone balance those two? Or how do you tell your students to balance those two? Absolutely. Absolutely. So we have, you know, I have this term that I call energetic fitness, Okay, so there's aerobic fitness, which gives you leaner muscles, strength training, which gives you bigger muscles, and then energetic fitness, which gives you more relaxed muscles. So we're actually teaching students and I'm teaching clients for my you know, private practice as a hypnotherapist to become sort of type A 
about their ability to relax and, you know, teaching people to become ambitious relaxers. I love this. I love this. Okay. (laughs) Tell me more. (laughs) So think of your body as being like water. Water has a solid form, ice. It has a liquid form, water. And it has a gaseous form, steam. You have a solid physical body. You can think of your emotions or energy in motion as being liquid. And your thoughts are kind of like steam or gas. Okay. Now, the way to, when you're not present or stressed, you're carrying physical tension. When, uh, and then, and then that physical tension blocks your emotions which then creates a racing mind. So whenever your mind is racing, or frankly, whenever you're thinking like a distracted thought, you're also blocking your energy or blocking your emotions, and you're also carrying tension in your body. So all mindfulness practices and all forms of energetic fitness, which include massage, yoga, um, you know, like any type of stretching or acupuncture, the more that you practice these modalities, the more tension that you release from your body, which then quiets your mind. Many forms of meditation try to work with the mind to create changes in the body. It's much easier to create changes in the body, physical relaxation, to create a quiet mind. So that's why you suggest the body scan as a great place for people to start. Absolutely. The body scan is is the very classic way to begin um, a mindfulness meditation practice. So I, I was following the breath out of my nose for a couple of years, about 12 years ago, you know, 10, 12 years ago. And I wasn't really getting it. I was constantly beating myself up for not having my mind be focused on my breathing, for being wandering. You know, even though they tell you that's part of the process, if you jump into mindfulness, you know, meditation with the intention to follow your breath, you're probably going to get bored or beat yourself up. When you switch over into the body scan, it's just so pleasurable to use your mind to relax your body. And then of course you can listen to an audio as well to guide you. And it's, and then the more that you practice it, the better that you get at being able to relax. And that's when my mindfulness practice really did take off. I've heard you say or talk about in the past that our subconscious mind is just our body or lives in our body. And you know, there's all this new science now about how we have awareness beyond our, our brain that you know there's this huge body awareness concept that's possible right now. Can you tell us about that? And I think you also maybe had a trick you wanted to share with listeners uh, about this. Yes, let's actually start with the trick. So everyone just go ahead and close your eyes. It's very short. And, um, and imagine that you're biting into a lemon and make the visualization so real that you start to salivate. And when you start to salivate, you can open your eyes. So the act of you salivating is the activation of your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind is just your body and how your body responds to where you put your attention, right? So, you know, someone might ask you, oh, how's it going with your, you know, mother-in-law or your cousin, right? And, you know, maybe this is someone that you're irritated with and you might start scratching your neck as you tell them about your cousin right? Well, that cousin is quote unquote, a pain in your neck, which simply means that you are creating a pain or a tension in your own neck whenever you think about or talk to or confront this person or situation in your life. So when we did that little trick just now, I I definitely felt myself salivating and I was very easily able to visualize the the, the you know sour taste of the lemon and my body had a physical response even though I wasn't biting into one right now. So I think what you're saying is that it's like that for everything in our life, our, our relationships, how we approach our fears or, or is, am I understanding correctly? You're exactly right. And so, so this is actually, you know, it can seem annoying at first, like, oh man, you know, I really do argue with people in my head and I start tensing myself up. Well, this is actually an enormous opportunity. Because if you ever want to create change in something in your life, A, you're tensing yourself up with respect to it. And this is universal. I mean, just please test this out for yourself. But as a hypnotherapist and a mindfulness coach, whenever someone has a change they they want to create, time and time again, the same thing is happening over and over. The person is tensing themselves up with respect to this area of their life, and they're not able to unwind or stop doing this self-induced tension. 
okay? So the way to do it, my whole job, I'm just going to open up my entire, you know, secret here, is to have people visualize that they are addressing a, a specific area of their life, whether it's taking a test or public speaking or riding in an airplane, right? And initially, their body tenses up because your body thinks that the situation is actually happening. And then you bring back this core principle of mindfulness of progressive relaxation. And you train yourself, and I train people, to progressively relax until they can visualize the scenario and their body stays relaxed. It's a simple goal, but it, takes, it can take hours of work sometimes if, it, if the issue is deep enough. But once you get to that point, you have unwound the trigger and worked through the, through the situation. And then when you next confront that area of your life, you're going to be calm, you're going to be present, and you're going to be able to manifest the outcome that you want. So if I'm an executive, let's say, and I'm super scared about public speaking and I have to give a big board meeting or big presentation, even though I'm not giving the presentation right now, anytime I think about having to speak in public or give the presentation, there's this physical reaction in my body. And that's where or helping people or we all need to just counteract that physical reaction by relaxing. Is that what you mean when you talk about like a stressful trigger? It's like the thing that you're scared about? Absolutely. Absolutely. And just to add some ideas to make doing this actually a bit more practical is you can devote your meditation that morning to that situation, right? Or, you know, like you can say, okay, I'm about to meditate as part of my practice. I just finished doing yoga. So I'm actually going to visualize myself engaging in this stressful situation that that is coming up today. And then I'm going to progressively relax myself as I visualize it so that I can then show up and feel more present when I actually face the situation. This is a super cool idea because I feel like this is very different from maybe people's common conception of meditation, right? They're like, oh, I'm meditating, so I should listen to ocean sounds and music and do everything I can to get as relaxed as possible. And I I love what you're sharing here, which is like, actually, of course, I'm sure there's value in doing that too. And maybe you can talk to us about the, the difference, but you're saying, no, actually think about the thing that's coming up that's the most stressful, the most scary, and try to relax and practice relaxing as you visualize that. And that's what's really gonna help you overcome your fears and, and perform at your peak. Absolutely. And, and so as you were talking, I, you know, I realized that you know, we are moving a little bit quick today in our talk because we're trying to give people as much information as possible. The first step is to make sure that you understand how to reset. And reset is synonymous for do nothing but breathe and you're not manipulating your breath at all or how to simply be or how to be present. I, I, I really strongly believe that there's one core way to activate present moment awareness and it involves tuning into what's happening in your body and in your mind in the moment and just continuing to progressively relax. And then once you're confident in being able to relax and reset in any situation given you know 30 seconds or 30 minutes of spare time, you can go as deep as you wish, then you can start to uh, direct this power of mindfulness into specific situations like we're talking about with visualization. Okay. And then the next step is really, or another step is the affirmation. Okay. The affirmation, you know, is, is the classic or is a classic way to direct the power of mindfulness into specific areas of your life. So there's three parts to an affirmation. There's the situation. So speaking in public, there is the outcome, feeling calm and delivering it successfully, right? And then there's the actual feeling afterwards of, oh, I feel elated. I feel proud of myself, right? So um, I successfully give my, my presentation and I feel proud of myself is like a classic affirmation. This podcast was brought to you by SavannahSpirit.com. In ancient Indian mythology, and even today, chakras are considered to be the most important energy centers in the body. It's been said that when all seven energy points are aligned, deep spiritual development occurs. When the chakras come into balance, they bring harmony, spiritually, mentally, and emotionally. In fact, sometimes when we feel off, it's really just these energy points that need to be worked on. Celebrate the seven chakras with a beautiful must-have chakra tank. Printed down the spine with sophisticated metallic ink, the chakras are represented by unique hand-drawn symbols. 
You can add a pop to your style with elegance, all while reminding yourself of the deeper spiritual truth of our world. Use the exclusive discount code PODCAST30 for 30% off your first order today. Do you want a $25 gift card from savannaspirit.com completely for free? It's super easy. All you have to do is fill out a quick survey with seven short questions, and then you'll be emailed your gift card to use whenever you're ready. This survey will help us better understand the most important thing in the world, you. Go to savannaspirit.com forward slash podcast survey today and claim your reward. Again, that's savannaspirit.com forward slash podcast survey. So I I love the affirmations. I want to go deeper. I want to make sure that I'm understanding and listeners too are understanding the reset correctly. So the reset is basically my ability as a practitioner to breathe through and decrease tension in my body anytime I'm feeling tension. And that tension, for example, if I'm scared of public speaking, that tension could be like a tightness in my chest, right? But perhaps if I'm scared of like a big exam I have coming up for someone else in a different scenario, that tension might manifest as a cramp in their stomach or something like that. So is is the reset, am I understanding that it's just breathing to relax the area that is tense and that the body's tense in different ways pending our different fears and phobias? Exactly. You got it exactly right. And in fact, I'm actually open to guiding you through it. It, you know, it could take about two minutes or so if you want to do it right now. Okay. Well, I think uh, me and listeners can be up for that challenge. Of course, listeners, if you're driving or doing something, don't relax too much. But if it's just two minutes, sure, give us, give us a sample. So do, do all of us need to bring to mind something we're maybe a little nervous or scared about? What's the first step? No, let's actually just keep it generic. So I'm going to teach you the generic reset. So again, unless you are driving, you can close your eyes if you wish. And if you're driving, just drive mindfully. And relax your face. Relax your jaw. And just be be more or less physically still. Relax your shoulders. Relax your arms. Notice your breathing as it comes in and out of your lungs. Relax your stomach. Relax your hips. Relax your legs. Relax your feet. And now relax everything all at once. And you're not forcing yourself to relax. You're simply noticing what you're feeling in your body. And especially when you become aware of tension, just feel it, notice it. You're not manipulating your breath in any way. And eventually you'll feel tension begin to thaw and melt. And every time you feel some tension leave your body, That's a sign that you are becoming more present, that you're able to feel your body more deeply. So I'm going to be quiet for about 15 seconds and just take yourself deeper. Okay, and that is the reset. That is the universal way to be present. The every meditation technique on the market is based off of that simple, profound technique. Mm, I feel so much more relaxed. (laughs) Hopefully, listeners, you tried it and you do too, because that was that was so, so short, but so profound. And I think the message I'm getting from our, our time with you, which I think is so different and interesting is that we need to be type A and ambitious about practicing that and that successful people are, are very good at practicing what we just did while keeping in mind and bringing to mind things that are stressful coming up in their life. Is that right? 
Absolutely. Absolutely. The more relaxed, the better of a relaxer that you become, the more skillful you're going to be at every role that you play in your life. You know, whether it's a, a CEO or a parent or a child or a student at work. And whenever you think a negative thought or feel a negative feeling, you're also tensing up your body. When you're thinking a positive thought or feeling a positive feeling, you are relaxing your body. So the more relaxed and mindful you become, the less capable you are of holding negative feelings inside and the more capable you are of allowing positive feelings to flow through your body. Now, I'm going to ask you a question because I, I'm f- familiar with somatic psychotherapy and I think a lot of listeners probably understand this idea of you know, body and mind connection. But one thing that I think can be challenging for folks is, you know, often a a therapist or a coach might say, okay, think, think of, you know, a stressful event. And then where do you feel that in your body? And, you know, some of us are so disconnected and some people are so disconnected from their body that they don't even know, like they can't identify a specific place, like the the itching of the neck example you gave that was so clear. They, They can't figure out in that case, what's the best thing to do just to relax the whole body So, okay, so the setting that you're talking about is when they're actually with a therapist or when they're actually with a coach. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, like if someone knows that they're terrified of public speaking, but they can't connect that to a particular place in their body where they feel that fear. Yeah, so then they would just continue to reset. You just continue to relax and eventually you'll begin to feel some things happening in your body. And if you don't, then you just notice that you're numb and you keep relaxing, you keep relaxing. And the more deeply that you go with your mindfulness and reset practice, the more easily you, you will engage with, you know, with a dialogue with your body, which is your subconscious mind. So, um, and, you know, there's tension that you've been carrying for decades, right? So, so this is not a process that just happens overnight. The key is just to start now and to start practicing the exquisite art of progressive relaxation and mindful awareness now. And then that's going to make it easier and easier to get more and more skillful at creating precise, deep behavioral changes in your life. I love that. So it's like peeling back these layers of the onion. So even if you can't, you know, target a specific place right away, it's like just keep doing that general reset and you'll gain more awareness over time the more you practice. Now, I know you're an expert in peak performance and helping people really use meditation and mindfulness to reach peak performance. And I think a phrase or a word that often gets combined with the idea of performing at our peak is this idea of being in a flow state, right? Or the flow state. What are you, what's your take on that? And how does that relate to the work that you do? So, so the flow state is essentially um, synonymous with being present, okay? When you're present, you're in the flow state, and when you're in the flow state, you're present, okay? And flow obviously refers to the flow of blood, the flow of breath, and I also use the zone, you know, like that, that state that athletes go into when they're making every single shot on the basketball court or everything seems to go in slow motion or everything's going perfectly well. The zone, presence, the flow state, it's all the same thing. And what most pro athletes don't even realize is that the driving force of how deeply present and in the flow state you are is how deeply relaxed you are. And so mindfulness is here to, to help you intentionally learn how to access your flow state more frequently, more deeply, and for longer and longer and longer periods of time. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to visualize this because I think all of us want to be in that flow state or what you call the zone, right? I mean, I think we hear it a lot with professional athletes, but I think, you know, even for me, just someone who works at a desk, uh, you know, I love it when I just feel like in the zone or I'm editing a, a YouTube video, right? And I'm in the zone, like time just flies by. And I think for all of us, the big question is like, how can we be in that state more often? And what's interesting about what you're saying is you're saying we can be in that state more often by slowing down and being better relaxers. Am I, is it true? Yeah, you're exactly right. So stretch every day for the rest of your life. Practice progressive relaxation every day for the rest of your life. Use affirmations or prayer, whatever calls out to you the most. You, you know, you want to be honing your skills of being able to relax 
and like make it a lifestyle. Okay. Personally, I think that enlightenment is a state that happens when you don't have any tension left to relax. I think enlightenment is simply relaxing until there's nothing left to relax. I think the Buddha just let every single ounce of tension go. And a lot of these other spiritual masters, that's just what they did. And you can see the connection between looking at mindfulness and progressive relaxation as a purification process, a process of self-purification and tension as being dirt that is being purified or swept out of the system. What's fascinating is I think so many people associate this sense of deep relaxation with this notion of like a Tibetan monk, right? Who who just meditates all day and isn't, I don't want to say he's not doing anything, but you know what I'm saying. And so when we, we're tying this now to, to peak performance and performing at our peak, it, it just, it seems almost like counterintuitive. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you know, I think we're moving into a profound shift. Well, you know, so first is with respect to the monk, I think that having a very balanced life where you have a lot of different interests, music, nature, community, uh, you know, obviously nutrition, right? I think, you know, living a balanced life is a really important part to being able to stay relaxed and connected to your body at all times. Okay. And then with respect to the counterintuitive, absolutely. I think we are moving in a direction where we're realizing, a, you know, a small subset of the population um, are realizing that straining and struggling and rushing and forcing yourself to do things that your body is resisting or saying no to is not a good way to move through life. You know, slowing down is not something that you wait to do until you retire. Like when you retire, you, you learn how to slow down now and clear your mind now so that a much higher percentage of your thoughts will actually be useful and progressive and focused and will take you in the direction of your goals versus if you're rushing around, your mind is going to be so muddled, it's going to be hard for you to make progress and get things done. So less is more. So let's use a very practical example because I think most listeners can can relate to this. You're about to sit down at your desk and do some work, right? Maybe it's some emails or maybe it's your profession, you know, whether it's editing a video or typing up a speech or whatever it is that you do. What would you suggest we maybe do first? If we want to get in that flow state, like we're, we're about to sit down and we want to get in the zone. I would reset. I would reset for a couple of minutes. You can set the timer on your phone or you can just sit there. Just sit there and close your eyes and relax your ass off. That's, that's what I tell my clients and my students. Uh, you relax every single cell of your body. And then when you think that you're done, you keep going because you're carrying tension that you're numb to. And if I'm trying to relax and my mind is saying, oh, I have to do this and I also have to do this and I also have to do that, I just keep bringing my attention back to my breath, back to my body. Exactly. Whenever you are thinking a thought, you know, in your meditation or frankly in your life, tension in your body is squeezing your awareness out of your body and up into your thoughts. So when you notice that you're thinking while you're meditating, notice it and then let your awareness drop back into your body and scan your body for the tension that is creating the thinking or that is accompanying the thinking. Noticing that you're thinking while you're meditating is like a massage therapist finding a knot while they're giving you a massage. You are supposed to notice that you're thinking. You are, you are supposed to bump up against these moments where you're tensing yourself up and creating distraction. This is, okay, this is so cool. So I want to make sure I'm understanding. So as, as I'm meditating, if I keep coming back to a particular thought or thought pattern or worry, or maybe it's just like all my to-dos, you're saying to really think about where that shows up, where I'm feeling that in my body, because it's sort of like this habitual knot that, that I'm dealing with. Exactly. Everyone has the experience of having a racing mind that won't be quiet. Everyone has an experience of stretching a muscle and being like, whoa, that's tight. That is the exact same process. A racing mind and a tense body and frankly, uh, um, suppressed emotions are all the same thing. And they are all a sign of, you know, I don't want to say not being present, but that's that's true, right? And and how present you are is not binary. It's not either you're, you're totally present or you're not present. It's a spectrum. 
right? But that's, that's the process. And when you're present or when you're more present, your body's more relaxed, your emotions are less blocked and they're more flowing and your mind is clear. So that's all the same process, just like the water, solid, liquid, gas. And what would you say to someone who maybe did that two minute exercise that we just did before, where I know I got super relaxed and, and they said, well, you know, after doing that, I felt like sleeping <laughs> or I felt like resting or I felt like no longer, you know, sit, sitting at my desk or even, you know, c- c- continuing to do anything. H- how does that work? Like what, what advice do you have for people who, who maybe had that experience? Cause I know I personally, I, I, I loved it, but I felt so relaxed that I wasn't like excited to jump back into maybe doing work or something that, you know, was, was like a task oriented type of thing. Sure. So feeling sleepy or low energy or unmotivated is still um, a sign of tension or blockages. Okay. There's a difference between like couch potato relaxed. I mean, this is, you know, now we're almost getting more into like the English language, right? Which is people associate relaxed with being a couch potato and, or, or being unmotivated, right? Or being lazy. And in my experience, it's those symptoms come from tension in the body right? And so we tell our students, you cannot be too physically relaxed while you're taking a test. You might be sluggish, right? In that case, make sure you're drinking plenty of water, make sure you did your cardio that day, make sure you're going to bed early. But those habits are different from being ambitious about how deeply you can relax. And, um, and yeah, I mean, just relax as deeply as possible and then pop up out of it and then just get up and ready to go. And if, you know, in the event that practicing deep relaxation for a minute or two minutes right before working isn't right for you, then do it 15 minutes before or do it 20 minutes before. Find out what works best for your body. But, you know, for my body, the more time I spend progressively relaxing wherever I am in my life, the better off I am, period. End of story. That's my experience. I love it. I know you're really passionate and have a lot of expertise in the emotional freedom technique. I was wondering if you could tell listeners what that is, just for those who don't know what it is and how it can integrate with all the work we've been talking about so far, if it does. Yeah. So um, I would say after the reset, um, emotional freedom technique, well, after the reset and then after the visualization piece of how to create specific change, emotional freedom technique is probably the third most important thing we're talking about today, which is, um, it's, you know, it's called EFT for short. And their main website is EFTuniverse.com. And that website gets about 10 million hits per year. And they have 5,000 case studies and testimonials of people that have overcome various mental, emotional, physical, psychological ailments with tapping. Okay. And what What's involved is you state phrases out loud that bring up your trigger. So I feel nervous when I'm taking a test or I feel overwhelmed when I'm studying for a test. I mean, as we said before, any negative feeling is accompanied by tension in the body. So while you're stating these phrases aloud, you're also tapping on various acupressure points. Acupressure is a form of energetic fitness, like meditation, like, like massage, like yoga. It, um, it releases tension, it boosts blood flow, and it just overall relaxes your body. So you're tapping on acupressure points to boost circulation and relax you while you're bringing up very specific triggers and situations in your life with stated phrases that are spoken aloud, okay? And usually you rate these feelings on a scale of zero to 10. Okay, I have test anxiety. It's about an eight out of 10, right? When I see myself visual, you know, when I visualize taking the test, and I, I try to let that anxiety come up, it can get to about an eight out of a 10 in my visualization. Then you take two or three minutes and you tap on feeling anxious during a test, and that will generally drop the feeling by about two or three points, okay? That reduction in intensity of the feeling that you're tapping on will correspond to a reduction in, 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 in its intensity in the actual situation itself. So just like meditation, tapping creates a very precise, deeply, you know, deeper state of relaxation in your specific situation, which then corresponds to a shift in how you feel when you next confront it in your life. And if someone studies tapping or works with an EFT practitioner, does that practitioner sort of know what parts of the body they should tap based on different fears or phobias they're having? So there, you know, it's called the EFT basic recipe, which is essentially the basic protocol, which is about a dozen points. You know, there's the top of the head, the crown chakra, right? There's the, there's the, you know, like the inner eyebrow, the temples, the cheeks, the chin, right? There's all these points that basically cover most or all of your meridians. 
So uh, you use that basic protocol for any and all phobias or fears or triggers. Perfect. So before we let you go, I really want to go through with you to make sure listeners understand and can walk away with an idea of how they can practice this in their daily life, because so much of what we're talking about is is so cool and maybe different from how people are meditating or integrating relaxation into their life right now. So I'd love for you to walk us through, for example, you know, let's say you get up in the morning, instead of doing maybe your traditional meditation that you've been doing so far, maybe you could do that first, but, but after that, you would sort of do this reset while at the same time calling to mind what you're worried about in the future and then using some affirmations. Again, I'm sure I'm butchering this, but I just kind of want you to walk us through because I think people so often when they're, when they're meditating, they're like, oh, I have to clear my mind and be thinking nothing. And I think maybe some of the things you've hinted at is actually telling us, well, no, you want to be focused on the speci- a specific part of your body, relaxing a specific part of your body that's associated with the fear, or you might want to even be purposely thinking positive affirmations. So, so can you walk us through what this might look like if we want to practice at home? Absolutely. So wake up and stretch your body. People have been preparing for meditation with stretching and yoga for thousands of years and with good reason. So start with stretching, start with Qigong. I love doing Qigong, which is probably a whole nother podcast, right? And um, move your body, stretch your body, breathe, get your blood flowing. And then find a posture that really works for you. I'm not a really big fan um, of, you know, being cross-legged. And in Chinese medicine, being cross-legged is more of an Indian thing rather than a Chinese medicine thing. Um, but, but if you love lotus, do it. I love to lay down on my back with my feet elevated on like a chair or on a couch, something like that. Um, or, or, or like sitting on a chair with your feet flat on the floor and your posture erect and upright. And then close your eyes and then progressively relax every single ounce of tension that you can feel in your body over and over and keep going. And you'll notice that thoughts just ever so gently disturb your um, process of feeling your body and relaxing your body. And that's part of, you know, think of thoughts as being like little boulders or little rocks in the river. Just notice when you come up against a rock or a thought and just come back to the exquisite experience of feeling your body and relaxing your body. And just make it like an extended Shavasana and, and, and a Shavasana with a very specific awareness, which is what are you feeling Where are you feeling it? Notice it, feel it, accept it, be with it as it is. And in all likelihood, it will begin to shift and to change and to relax. And then um, towards the end, you can then visualize something, you know, a, you know, a big talk for you that day or, you know, um, a, you know, a challenging conversation that you're going to have with someone in your life and or later in your day, just say aloud what you want to be true. So I speak in public and I feel calm and strong or I, uh, I teach yoga and I feel uh, present and powerful, right? Or I, uh, I'm at work and I feel confident and certain. Right. So, so, so you're saying a specific area of your life and you're saying a couple of words, keep it short, um, about how you're showing up and how you're performing externally. And then you're saying something about how you're feeling internally. And affirmations are going to have a resetting quality to your body. They are going to be relaxing for you to say. They're going to be relaxing for you to feel in your body. And they're going to create change in you in the moment as well as in that situation when you next confront it in your life. And so, and then, um, of course, if you can um, fit in some more stretching and some more um, resetting at the end of your day as well. You know, that's generally two mindfulness practices. Obviously, one is great if that's where you are. But if you can do two, that's when you really start to notice some changes, right? You wake up and you picked up all this tension from being asleep, kind of like being in an airplane, like it's just sleeping and riding in an airplane or a car. It just creates tension, right? So you wake up and you relax and you shed all those blockages. And then at the end of your day, you, you shed more of the tension that you've accumulated throughout the course of your day. And if someone wants to work on something specific, like the fear or the phobia and calling that to mind, then maybe do that through the affirmations at the end, it sounds like. As well. And, and then they can also call me or email me. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> Perfect. 
I, you know, like I've been working with, you know, people for about seven, eight years now. I'm working over Skype, getting extraordinary, you know, results with people. Once you've done or received mindfulness coaching or hypnotherapy or any sort of personal change work, you're going to feel more at ease and more relaxed in your body and you're going to perform better. Before you're tense, you're struggling and you're underperforming. After things are easier and better. So that's, that's my big plug for that body of work. Beautiful. Well, you leapt right to what I was going to ask you next, which is, first of all, thank you so much for talking to us. I think we all learned a lot. And the second is just how can listeners connect with you uh, beyond this podcast? What's the best place for them to find you online? Absolutely. So my website is mindfultesttaking.com. So you can email me at info at mindfultesttaking.com. And you can reach out if you have an, you know, if you're a student with an academic stress, or if you have some phobia or fear or some behavioral pattern that you just can't get over and, and that you'd like some support with. And it's going to be a meditative process. You are going to feel different after, you know, essentially each and every session, right? I, like I've never gotten a good massage and not feeling, not felt different afterwards. I've never gone to a good yoga class and not felt different afterwards. Mindfulness coaching, hypnotherapy, meditation is the same way where if you're not feeling different after that session, find a new approach, find someone else, find that, find another way to do it that works. Cause this stuff does take time to, to deliver big changes, but subtle gradual changes are absolutely apparent after each and every session. I think that's such great advice. John, thank you so much for being with us today. I'll make sure to link up everything below in the show notes. Listeners, let me know what you thought of today's episode. What did you learn? Did you enjoy it? I would really love to hear from you. And again, the best place is the Facebook group, savannaeast.com forward slash group. And remember that if you did enjoy today's episode, we would love your rating or review here on iTunes. It really helps. It gets the show in front of more people who are looking to transform their life through yoga, mindfulness, and meditation, it makes a big difference. I hope you have a beautiful rest of the day and maybe implement some of the techniques we learned about on today's show tonight, later in bed, or tomorrow morning. So much love from my heart to yours. Namaste.